So we do have a quorum. Um, again, I'm, I'm Bob Tate. I'm the Assistant Finance Director and the HR Manager, uh, along with uh, Bill White, who is the Assistant Township Manager and the Finance Director. Uh, he and I will both attend meetings, or one of us will attend these meetings. Uh, these are your meetings. This is Carfax Group. This is your meeting. And um, we are here to help facilitate and help provide information, help answer questions, and help support the projects that CARFAC endeavors to, to work on uh, at the direction of the board. Uh, there's no formal agenda for tonight, but since we do have a quorum and we're only absent one member, really the first uh, matter of business would be to uh, for you to talk and, and agree and come up with um, who would be the chair, the vice chair, and secretary. Three positions that CARFEC has traditionally held. The three positions that were part of the group. You have our backgrounds. Do you have recommendations based on our experience of who's best to fill those roles from the outset? Um, no, I, I don't really have a recommendation. I don't know if it's really a background based or uh, just um, you know someone who wants to. So, for example, the chair would be the, the point person, probably the person who would communicate with uh, the township, whether Bill or myself, and also the person who may be communicating with one or more board members as needed. So, sort of like head project manager working with the team to yeah. work together. Uh, yes, yes, that would be that would be a good a good description. Uh, that would also involve uh, setting the agenda for the meeting, circulating the agenda in advance, and uh, just coordinating if there are projects or assignments to see that each each member involved has whatever information you want in advance of the meetings. Uh, so that would be the, and, and the chairperson would call the meeting to order and run the agenda. Kind of run, yeah, it's kind of run. It's traditional for a group like this in an NGO type of concept to have that and that person really pulls all that together with whatever people are handling whatever specific projects. It would be helpful if we kind of went around the room and kind of introduced each other because I don't know anyone <laughs> personally. I mean, you and I talked, of course, and we all had that. Uh, that might help a little bit in terms of who we are and the background and so forth. Absolutely. Is that helpful? Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and then there's some logistics that I'm particularly interested in because there, were, there will be some months when I'm not physically here. You know, for example, when we have ability to be on the phone, uh, you know, in, in, in meetings, is that allowed or not? I, I don't know. Um, but that's uh, certainly a logistical issue in terms of having a quorum as well, mm -hmm. and things like that, which maybe we can discuss secondarily. Sure. Sure. But why don't we start off with that, with introductions, and I think that's a great... Okay. Yeah, if you want to... So I'll start. <laughs> uh, my name is Joseph Reiser, and I'm a... Uh, uh, resident of Radnor for almost 16 years now. Uh, I live in Inverary, uh, which is across from the Willows, in case if you maybe know that community or not. And, and I also happen to be, fortunately or unfortunately, president of that association. So I've had uh, a number of interactions with Radnor Township, uh, mostly because of the Willows and, and other things. And, and a lot of good interactions, I would say, some not so I would say perhaps somewhat contentious in some ways, but all resolvable. Um, so I'm, um, I think Radnor is a great place to live, and um, you know I I get involved personally when I think I can contribute, and I, I'm not totally sure how much I can contribute in this body, but I think we'll find out perhaps. Um, and so I'm uh, I was uh, someone nominated people told me I should consider this and I, we all interviewed and, and, and so here we are. So I, I other than uh, one member that was a previous member of this group where I got some input about this group, 
I, I have limited you know, knowledge of exactly the type of programs that, we, that are taken on here and we, we should consider. My background is uh, I'm, a, I'm a scientist by training way back. Uh, I'm, I'm 20, 38 years in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, I'm in my eighth company, my last company, hopefully, um, and big pharma, small, co small smaller companies, biotech, and uh, I'm currently mostly semi-retired and I'm mostly on board assignments and things like that. Uh, so um, I've seen corporate functions from all aspects. I've run three public companies, uh, NASDAQ level companies, and so I've been at least exposed to those kinds of SEC requirements and so forth, which are different here, I'm sure, to some extent. But I certainly know corporate governance. I, I rate corporate governance very high in, in on my side of the equation, if you will. I think it's a very important element. So when I think about corporate governance, I also think about commissioners, Radner functions, and so forth. So that's certainly a bias that I have. So in any case, that's uh, kind of short background. Uh, my name is Rob Norton. I've been a, res a resident of Radnor since 1996, uh, so 20 plus years. Um, my kids have all gone through the schools here, and you know we're a big uh, fan and supporter of Radnor. Um, I think it's a great place to, to live and bring up kids, and, and uh, very very happy uh, here. Um, again, I, I try to get involved in things when I'm uh, got got the opportunity. Um, my, my background and, and career has all been in the investment business. I'm a CFA charter holder, very finance oriented. Um, I've recently, I've been involved in the CFA Society of Philadelphia, recently stepped down as the president, so I had a little more time, thought this might be a, a way to chip in, uh, to sort of bring my, some of my finance background and, and that to, uh, to the township. So. My name is Jay Osterholm. We were talking before you guys came in. My background is M&A, um, MBA from GW. Started, uh, did three startups in the pharmaceutical medical device arena, and then uh, moved on to do some some other work in pharmaceuticals, and large corporate pharmaceuticals, sort of backfilling with uh, for uh, project management, and then um, broke free of all that, went into advertising, and did two more startups in that. Which is kind of the same thing when you talk about business strategy. So, uh, you know, if you buy a franchise, do you have to know every single thing about the franchise, or you're going to have to know about business? Probably both is a good idea. But, um, and I've been doing, I'm out on my own now, and my clients largely involve um, military and national security clients, which I have zero hours of experience in terms of that. Two years now at this point. Prior to that, none. But it's about business strategy, so in contract negotiations, conflict negotiations, um, and uh, project management. So um, I'm not pushing myself out there as a, as a lead. I don't have the deep dive, probably technical expertise of, of you guys, um, and it's, I mean, it makes us a good team, and I recognize that. But uh, I'm pretty good at project management, getting things done, and then having the perspective and vantage to see what the best outcome is, what success is, and getting there, and mitigating things that get in the way. And there are always things that get in the way that have to be addressed, so that's me. Great. Uh, I'm Bob Tate. I am, uh, I've been with Radnor Township since 2012. Uh, not a resident, uh, born and raised in the city, graduated at Drexel University, became a CPA, moved out to Bucks County, <coughs> uh, started my career. <coughs> And did some public accounting and worked in some in consulting and healthcare primarily. And then about 12 years ago, got into local government. I was with another township in Bucks County until 2012, and then came here to Radnor, uh, serving as uh, assistant finance director and the HR manager. Uh, in the finance role, primarily I'm the Act 511 administrator, which is overseeing the business taxes, uh, which I know that's your one of your number one charters from the board, uh, number one projects to, to jump on this coming year. Uh, and it, it, although I don't live here, I have relatives in the township. It's, it's a great township. Uh, I learned an awful lot in the past seven years working here, gone on eight, and 
and um, we have a great, great leadership team, great manager. Uh, the culture and the community here that uh, that, that this the, the employees here that we have is, uh, I think, is unique. Um, worked in a, a number of places in the past, but you'll find as you interact with more employees here and other staff members, depending on what projects that you're working on, uh, it's a tremendous team spirit. Uh, a lot of people very proud and very happy to work here. And I hope that shows in the services that, that you see delivered throughout the township, whether it's police or clearing the roads or trash pickup or anything like that, uh, and the parks and the programs. So it's a great place. We work hard. We have a lot of fun. And uh, I'm here to help and, and contribute to the group and help facilitate whatever projects uh, the board direction to work on. I'm Ed Kane. Um, I'm an original member of Carfax. I've been on Carfax since from inception till um, we all voluntarily quit. Um, and, uh, but, there was a reason that I was volunteered to stay on, so to speak. I'm a CPA, a managing partner of my firm. We have five offices between Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and Florida. And we're headquartered right here. I've been a resident of the township since the late 80s. And um, and I do care. I've been chairing <coughs> what we call the audit subgroup of the township. Um, if you think of it as a for-profit entity where there's an audit committee um, of the board and potentially other appointed people, that is the function of the group that I head up. And to work with management, to work with the independent accounting firm. Um, to ensure at the direction of the commissioners, and that has not changed in years, um, that the audit is carried out, goal being that we end up with a clean opinion, which we have. And for the last three years, I think zero comments on the management letter. That's how much and how well uh, Bob, Bill, and Bob in that sequencing um, have been able to clean up um, the control weaknesses that were inherent in the township when we first started this. Um, we are currently on our second go around with an independent accounting firm. Um, it's not even second tier at this point. I think it's uh, top 20, I think. I'm not even sure. Uh, but they do have a specialty in dealing with these type of entities, um, and we're pleased with them. But in this second round, we're now in our second year of the second round. Second. Um, once this time period ends, it will go back out for bids, and uh, they will probably be precluded from continuing. But it remains to be seen. Uh, so my what is function. That time frame? Pardon me. What, how long are they till they sunset? Uh, it was another three years. So five years. The charter calls for that the township go out to bid every three RFP for <coughs> auditing services. The same firm can be reappointed. Uh, so that's what Ed's talking about. The second this is their second round. So this will be their fifth audit, technically coming up for 2019. I mean, there is a possibility we would continue with them, but it still once we go out for bids, and we will. Um, we have to see who's bidding, what their quals are, um, are they qualified to do this. Um, we do a detailed vetting process on this. It's What's no the name of the firm? Pardon me? What's the name of the current firm? Zelotowski Axrod. Z-A. And prior to that, we were using a CLA, which is a top 10 firm in the country. And probably would have continued.
continued with CLA, but their prices had uh, skyrocketed. And um, when ZA came in, and we liked their qualifications, and we were surprised how much lower they were in pricing, and very conscious of what would be spent or not spent. And we've been pleased with that. And how does that relate to this group? Or does it? <laughs> it does. Uh, the Board of Commissioners have delegated to this group for the handling, and it's in our original charter, the handling of the audit. Okay, so they do the audit. So, so how is that? Okay. How is that different from that other group you work with? Which other? You said you were you were in another committee or something? No, that's all part of this. No, this is Normally, this should be a very specific subpart of the Board of Commissioners. If you were to look at like uh, the committee corporate saying. law, what's required, that's where it should be. Our commissioners have decided not to do that. Correct me if I'm wrong. You, you mean the audit subgroup or right. the audit the for profit right. entity of the audit committee would be a direct link underneath the Board of Commissioners? And that's where it should, and I have but stated that to them for years. That's really where it should but be it's not resident. Not but that's not the way it occurs here. So Correct. the Board of Commissioners have said to Carfax, you handle it. So I've been handling that since that was first uh, given to Carfax. And my concern, and I agreed with the other members of Carfax about resigning, but my concern was to get the audit finished. And that goes back to my background as a CPA. I'm a past board member of the AICPA, past board member of the Pennsylvania Institute of CPAs, um, past national president of the country's second largest CPA organization. So I get all this. I do understand it. And I wanted to ensure that that would happen. So in the hiatus where Carfax really wasn't functioning, I was still handling this piece at the request of the commissioners and the request of Matt. So you're sort of like a one-man band for that, for well, that function? In that sense, right. yes. Right. And there were never more than two or three of us from this group that would be involved anyway. Uh, and most of it I would handle directly with management and then working with the independent accounting firm. Many of the accounting firms I know throughout the area that would have the skill sets be able to handle this. So this is a contribution margin to that. There's some contributing to that. We're not doing it, right? Because we're not doing it. We're not doing the audit. Right. We're purely functioning the way an audit committee of the board would function. Understood. So it's a very different process, okay. but it's a very needed process, of course. And so, it, it, excuse, excuse me a second. That's <laughs> separate from Carfax? No, that's part that's of part. our fact. So, I mean, so you, you described that you're the chairman of the audit subgroup of the township. So I thought that's, but that's Carfax. That's Carfax. Yeah. 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 In, the, in the past, uh, there was a time when, several years ago, Carfax, based on the projects that were being worked on, <coughs> had certain members working on a certain project that maybe uh, were IT related, other members working on a project that had to do with other aspects of the township and then we always had one or two members on the audit subgroup who focused primarily on the audit which was the original charter from the township when Carfax was created to have oversight on the financial audit independent of management and independent of the board so Ed in his capacity has been involved when we go out to RFP uh, reviewing the responses, uh, interviewing the firms. Uh, once the firm is selected, we'll meet, we'll have pre-audit planning, Ed with management, and then independently Ed meets with, or I shouldn't just say Ed, the audit subgroup will meet with the auditors up front, discuss any issues or, you know, make sure there's, there's no issues that they need to be addressed. During the audit, pro the audit process, which typically spans four weeks on site. But there's time in advance of that and then 
time after that before the financials are, are completed. The auditors will meet again with management, with Ed, and independently with Ed, discuss any issues, any concerns, um, and then Ed is the, the liaison to the board uh, regarding the audit. So what's Carfax, who passes ultimately on the outcome of the audit? The audit, um, when you say outcome, you're talking the results of the audit. Yeah. So you We will discuss it as a group. Okay. Uh, it comes back to here. It's a very tight time frame when that occurs because there's a very specific date that we want it to be accepted by the Board of Commissioners. Um, so, and then ultimately when we're satisfied, it goes to the commissioners okay. asking for their acceptance of the audit itself, which So ultimately accept. the role of CARFAC is to pass on the audit that then goes to the commissioners. CARFAC will, we have a resolution um, which has been year, each year. CARFAC, in the resolution, it will say that you know, CARFAC recommends that the Board of Commissioners accept the financial statements. <coughs> there's no approval needed, there's no, you know, it, it, the audit results are the audit results. It's up to the Board to accept the results um, as presented. And the Board has always appreciated Carfax's involvement. And that could be the auditors come in here and they, they spend an hour, talk about the audit process, talk about what they found, if there's any issues. You know, we have a clean opinion. You know, here's uh, an upcoming GASB that we need to address for reporting purposes for future years. Yeah, I, th I think I understand the process, but the concern I have is what if we disagree over their, uh, their issues with the audit that then have to be communicated with the commissioners? In other words, I could imagine theoretically it would be in a situation where we, we don't, you know, the, 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 the audit is not clean, just, you know, pass through. It's, there are issues that may have to be addressed, right? Has that occurred in the past at all? So who resolves that, right? Mm -hmm. resolves well, let's that. back it up from a history view. That has not occurred since CARFAC was created, number one. Number two, there were issues before CARFAC, specifically with the old regime that was here, the township manager, if you've been around long enough, you're probably aware of that history. Uh, truth be told, if you go back and you read the original management letter that was first issued 10, 11 years ago at this point, there were enough concerns. It should have been a qualified opinion. Mm -hmm. the I w if it had been me issuing it, I would have qualified my firm's opinion on uh, the township. So this is not. Um, so go ahead. This is not a product that comes out of Carfax, but it is a product that, that is. It goes through Carfax right. to get to the commissioners and to get to the public. Okay. So our hands touch it, but we're not responsible for the audit. Well, I promise correct. you, the way the resolution right. is worded, um, it's not the normal type of resolution that would be going to a board in a for-profit entity. Um, so we have modified that so that we are not taking direct responsibility. I mean, that is the function of the commissioners, not us. Well, and is that, that, actually does that feedback loop also kind of go through us? So if there are recommendations as part of the audit or, or things that need to be done, we then can we work with the township people to sort of to sort of execute on that stuff and to sort of that's why know, I said the process. Right. In the last three years, there have been zero management letter comments. And I keep working with the independent accounting firm, wanting right, that's to know too if simple, there's right? an there's issue. There's got to be something because wrong, right? It's, it's, it's <laughs> Thank supposed, you. There's supposed to be something wrong, right? <laughs> but I'm telling you, the job that Tate, that White, and Zenkowski have done, it's yeoman's work. And it, it shows in the results of the financial statements. So, so just um, a little history, this, this sort of mass resignation, what, what sort of prompted that? Just, I, I don't want to. I'm not going to go into it when we're on the okay. record. <laughs> That's fine. 
perfectly understand. Yeah, one, it, one final point. Um, in the auditor's letter, if you're familiar with the an audit letter, it clearly states financial statements are the responsibility of management. The auditor simply expresses an opinion on them. So the manager, township manager, Bill White, they actually sign off on the management rep letter. The administration is responsible for the statements. So, uh, and that's why, to Ed's point, the resolution that goes to the board has been carefully worded that simply says the board accepts the financial statements. Carthac, you'll be in an advisory role, and like as you say, it just kind of passes through. Fortunately, the issues have been tremendously minimized. It's been very clean. Um, hopefully, it'll be an enjoyable meeting. It's, it's very... What I learned in the process of being interviewed and discussing this, this is one of the key functions of Carfac. So my point is, we have uh, what I just heard, I think, very clear expertise in this group already that can deal with such audits. Or, uh, so, you know, it seems to me that it's a pretty significant part of our responsibility. This, this can't be just a pass-through concept, because I've seen those pass-throughs, and, and at some point they catch up with you. Look what happened in Chester County recently. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, one, whatever that, I don't know any details, I just know, what I just read the headlines, right? That was <coughs> Kennett Square, um, and you're correct in what you were reading. Oh, yeah. Uh, the controls are tested, um, so they are doing substantive testing of the controls. Uh, they are determining on their own, the independent accounting firm, what areas they want to concentrate in. Um, in addition, if we come up with something we want them to look at, they will look at it. So we're also doing our own evaluation. What areas do we want them to consider? So when you're hearing the word pass through, don't think of it that way. It's probably a bad word to use. This is fully vetted. It follows all the standards of my profession. Uh, I'm not concerned about that. I signed off on many audits as a CEO. I, and, and, and I didn't know all the details, but at some point, you know, there's a point of responsibility. I think we're intermediate to that because the, ultimately the commissioners have to accept that responsibility. But I understood our responsibility is to vet the, the audit in a way where the commissioners have a clear picture of what we believe the audit represents. Uh, not, not understanding that we don't have the final liability, if you will, in that sense of responsibility, but it is a key function, as I understood it. With this I, I think it'll be an education process and a learning process for everyone involved, um, because the there is a lot of information in the audit, and ultimately in our comprehensive annual financial report, uh, which, by the way, they're on the website, and if you have a chance and you want to dive into it, it has a lot of, a lot of information. So I think it's it's good to, as we go through, and you're right, pastor is a bad word. The auditors will come and present, they will talk, they will answer all questions, they will discuss all of the various funds, all of their, you know, the testing they've done, they'll talk about, you know, uh, the fund balance, the, they'll talk about all of the things relative to the audit, so that you have at least an understanding and begin to develop a comfort level that the process, you're comfortable with the process, you're comfortable with the work performed, by no means a pass-through. Mm -hmm. I think the word, the intention here is that, it came up earlier, this group has no responsibility for preparing or signing off on or taking, you know, any responsibility for the work product. But you have a, you have a responsibility to um, vet it as, it as we're coming, as we go through the process and to ask questions, and, you know, uh, if you have questions about pension liabilities, about, you know, our, our bond financing, uh, any of those major areas, uh, that, that's okay. it's all open, fair game. So not to interrupt your introductions, I yeah. think, until I get to this, but am I correct? Just to summarize, we'll be given a list. First, there's, there's everything, and if you just pick it up and look at it, you start going through it without any direction of context of what we're going to be looking for, other than people who have very specific, you know, knowledge of, here's a, here's a punch list of things we need to look at. 
will be given a contextual list of this is the stuff you look at and lay it out and other stuff you find, great. There's a an A list and a B list and a C list of priorities, is that correct? In reviewing this stuff? Just trying yes, to I wouldn't would call it an A, B, and C. Um, over time we would be given okay. projects by the Board of Commissioners to look into. Uh, one of the constants every year was dealing with the audit. And that is a key part. And if you go back to the charter of Carfax, it's right there. Good. And so that has not changed over the years. Almost all the other projects, it depends on what is being looked at. Uh, and basically, you name it, we've looked at it. The willows um, and dealing with funding f and how that can become a revenue generator for the township. Dealing with now what's being built um, for Penn Medicine. Uh, and that has been a whole issue over the years. Uh, when it, you know, Carfact had its opinion when it should happen, when it should not happen. Happened many years later uh, than what necessarily we wanted to see as a way to keep our taxes down. Uh, looking at various taxes that the township charges. Again, a lot of this was because the commissioner said look into it, so we would. So I think but the important thing about the audit is that it, it does have, as you sort of said, those three kind of components to it. It's sort of prepping and what are the lining up, what are the questions, what are the things that you're going to look at and how are you going to look at them and, and then getting the data, doing the kind of audit and then there's the back end where it's, you know, what are the findings, what are the issues, are there questions and so, Does it make you sense? know, that, that whole that, that whole process is, is, is important and integral to the, the auditing scope and I think we're, we, my sense is that we're kind of involved in that on all uh, in all parts of it. Not we're not doing the actual audit, but we're in there I'm just answering questions. Okay. Great. I guess, I guess you're up, Emily. Uh, yeah. Uh, my name's Emily Nelson, and um, I'm a I guess a longtime resident of Radnor Township um, since 1982. Although I took a break uh, for about um, eight or so years to live out on the West Coast. Um, I've been back since 2000 and. I have a son who goes to Wayne Elementary School. And my professional background, um, my, my first real job out of college was in Radnor Township. I was a sports writer and editor of the TV Guide. Um, then I decided I wanted to own a car and live on my own at the same time, so I went to <laughs> law school <laughs> and uh, started my career out as a, a, a tax lawyer, um, focusing mainly on private client, uh, probate litigation, trust and estate administration, um, business succession planning, that sort of thing. Um, and then when I moved out to California, I joined a smaller firm and we did uh, three things basically. Um, one was municipal law, so we were you know, assistant uh, you know, counsel to the city of Cerritos. Um, I spent first year of my job out there working on a an actuarial malpractice action um, on behalf of LA County against Towers Perrin um, regarding their public pension fund and um, the underfunding of said fund. Uh, we reviewed RFPs, we um, handled lawsuits against uh, you know, the police departments for excessive force. Um, and various other things. I'm now working for a smaller firm, so I pretty much handle whatever comes in through the door, whether it be estate planning, <coughs> dog bite, or custody issues. Um, I'm also part of the Delco transition team um, for the, the incoming um, commissioners um, who have been elected to, to serve um, for this coming term. And I'm on the board of directors for a breast cancer transportation charity. My name is Tony Mendocino. Um, I've got everybody beat. I've been a resident since 1978, so I've been a long time. <laughs> uh, 
My wife and I have two children. One graduated from Bradford in 94, one in 98, so we took the school system. Um, our son lives in Berwyn with his two girls. Our daughter and her husband live in Wayne. They're back in the Bradford School District. Uh, they just got two and a half year old twins. Um, and she's currently a long term sub at Bradford Middle School. So we are kind of ingrained in the, in the system. <coughs> Professionally, I, uh, my education, I'm a, uh, an engineer with an MBA. Um, most of the companies I've worked for have been in the energy business. I worked for Buckeye Pipeline, if you remember when they were down at the, uh, really where Reader's Digest was. Uh, oh, with the Roger Public Center. Exactly, yep. Uh, and left them to go to work for UGI Corporation, which was in Valley Forge, uh, another energy business. Uh, did M&A work there and progressed to be the treasurer. They uh, had ill fated ex exploration into the uh, energy uh, millfield service business back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. Uh, again, not successful. So in 87, I left and went with a spin off uh, as the CFO. And I now frack wells, I now drill wells. Uh, so I'm going to talk about any of that stuff. If the township wants to do that, I'm, I'm your man. Uh, <coughs> Left that, went back to UGI, became the CFO, uh, and had responsibility for the audits and pension plan, taxes, that sort of thing. So uh, I didn't do all this stuff myself, obviously, finances, but uh, certainly have a, a working knowledge of how things get done, how audits get done, how financings get done, um, so on. So um, been retired since 2007. So some of my kind of hands-on experience is dated, but kind of the, I don't think the first principles change very much over time. So I think there's a lot of things I could contribute, although I don't, I don't have as many people to call with specific questions as I, I did uh, 20 years ago. Great. Great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's great. So, if, um, so beyond the the central part of what we're supposed to be doing is the you know the audit thing. That's kind of a constant. What are some of the other things that um, that you know to be sort of on our plate or th that they're talking about? Uh, um, discussing or sure. Let me uh, just as some as background. Um, when you look at the township budget. The real estate taxes, the business taxes, um, I think real estate taxes are roughly a third and business taxes are roughly a third. All other fees and, and um, other monies that come in make up the other the remaining part of the budget. So business taxes are critical. Uh, it's roughly 10 to $12 million a year that we collect. In 2000, Geez, before my time, 06, 07, before I was here, and when the economy, you know, took a hit, the taxes dipped dramatically. Uh, started to rebound in 2009 and 2010, and they were growing consistently, year over year. Um, this past year, actually in 2018, and now again in 2019, kind of took a little bit of a decline. So it kind of got a little concern, and I, my understanding, I don't know if anyone has had any direct communication with the board, but um, my understanding from the board is that they want Carfac to look into it, uh, specifically how and and what and uh, you know I, I I don't have I don't have details I I don't have any communication with the board on what they want the group to look at. But at a, just at a very high level, the concern was that uh, business taxes have dipped a little bit, and that could be something that this group could look into. Uh, about four years ago, Carfac was, uh, was looking into the business taxes, and uh, we engaged a, again, let me back up again. To run the, the Act 511 tax program, I have an outside solicitor who specializes in 
local business taxes. Uh, has been the solicitor for many years, an expert in the area, and also served many other municipalities in that capacity. We have an independent CPA who is a specialist and has served as an expert witness and has probably just over 30 years plus experience in Act 511 taxes. When I say Act 511, that's the state statute that authored local business taxes at this level. Uh, it goes back to, I think, the mid-60s and townships had until, I guess, December 31st of 1989 to adopt a business tax. Uh, otherwise, it would sunset. It would, you, know, you couldn't do that. Radnor, fortunately, had a business tax. They adopted it. It was in place and uh, has been a very positive revenue, revenue stream for the township. And the better the business taxes do, the better we, the real estate taxes can, can stay in check. Um, so we have an auditor who has been with the township over 25 years. Uh, like I said, he's an expert witness. Uh, he's known throughout the state. So he knows these taxes better than anybody uh, that I've ever met. And he's a very key resource in helping to uh, audit when we need to go out and audit a particular entity. Uh, we also just engaged a third party firm to do discovery work. So there's another whole aspect of this process is to find businesses operating in the township who are not registered, not filing, not paying, they're just flying under the radar. Um, that's no easy task. It requires a significant amount of energy and effort and time and there's third party companies who specialize in this process. And when they get paid on a percentage basis? They're on it's a contingent fee only. Contingent based on what they, so they get whatever they find, they get the, what they kill, part of it. So yeah, the township engaged a, f a firm back in 2014, um, and at the time they were engaged at a, at a retainer rate, a, a, a contingent fee rate of 32%. <coughs> that contract has since expired. We've engaged a new firm uh, at a fee of 20%. And is that ongoing, or is that a first year? Or how does that work? It's ongoing. It's an ongoing fee. There's provision in there if, if they're working on a case that goes beyond 90 days and it gets into an appeal process. Uh, there's a 25% uh, factor only in those types of cases. Uh, what we like about the new firm is that they're local, um, and uh, they've been in business about five years and. They have uh, they've shown some really nice results from the surrounding townships who they are already engaged with. Uh, so that 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 engagement is was literally just signed a couple weeks ago. So we're going to be meeting and getting started with, with that process, just on the discovery side. So the the business tax administration is 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 quite a process involving the enforcement, compliance, the auditing, the discovery. Uh, it takes multiple parties involved, and so we do rely heavily on these outside resources. So uh, the board is interested in having this group uh, take a look. Uh, how you'd want to do that, where you'd want to begin, uh, I, I think it's kind of wide open. I don't think there's any... Uh, how the business taxes are per head, per... You know, it's a, is it a percentage of uh, revenue or are there different types of taxes? Uh, there's, uh, there's one tax and it's a gross receipts tax. So businesses pay on the gross receipts. Uh, in the regulations we have it divided under two headings. One's called business privilege, one's called mercantile. Uh, mercantile are retailers grocery stores, restaurants, you know, salons, uh, anybody in the retail world. Uh, they, are, they file a mercantile tax form. And that's about 15% of, of the businesses. 85% are business privilege tax. They're the professionals, they're the big, the big corporations. They're the, Different rate. the services. The same rate, it's 0.3% of gross receipts after a $25,000 exclusion. 
So yeah, we we could we could schedule another meeting and uh, when when the time and we could we could spend a lot of time on I, I give you all the background on provide you with the copy of the ordinance, the regulations, how it applies. Um, at some point, if you'd like to meet with our solicitor or our auditor uh, and get more information, uh, I know they'd be happy to meet. And that would be helpful to see the experience that each person has gone through. Who is the solicitor? Jennifer Brown. She's also a resident. So about the, the, the new Penn facility, Township will get 0.3% of their gross revenue that's attributable to Radnor? I mean, I guess that's the issue. That's a great question. So, how much time do you have? Well, we're not going to go back to Biden. <laughs> <laughs> um, Penn is a nonprofit organization. Okay. Nonprofit organizations are exempt under the law to the extent of their gross receipts from their charitable purpose. If they have gross receipts from unrelated business activities, such as they have a, a, gift, shop. a gift shop or they, they, they rent the space out for, they have space that they rent, they sublease, those are considered taxable business activities. So they would be required to file and pay on that portion. Um, even though they are uh, nonprofit, uh, my understanding and, and is that they are they will pay the real estate tax. They're eligible for a real estate tax exemption. They have been eligible for a real estate tax exemption at their existing location. They voluntarily, as I understand, and this goes back way before my time, they never uh, went and requested for exemption. So they voluntarily pay on the real estate tax. Uh, my understanding that's going to continue at the new site, mm -hmm. that the township will, they will pay on the real estate tax. To the extent the operations inside their building, if they are subleasing to a for-profit doctor, chiropractor, specialist, whatever. If there are other medical specialties subleasing independent of their organization, uh, then Penn would pay on their rental receipts as taxable activity, and that organization as a for-profit entity would pay on their gross receipts of their activity. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that, as that project moves along and develops, who is going to be taxable and who is not, and to what extent. And there was something similar also set up for Villanova for their expansion most recently that occurred along yeah. Lancaster Avenue. Now let me just, uh, one thing I'll say, if my solicitor was here, she probably would have slapped me by now. One thing she is very good about doing and, and talking about up front is uh, Taxpayer Bill of Rights. Any discussion about a business tax business taxes uh, is, well, the fact that we're being recorded, we should not discuss names or any aspects of taxation. I can't tell you who filed, I can't tell you what they paid on, I can't, I, we cannot discuss that. That's their privacy. Uh, so, which kind of circles back to why you didn't want to <coughs> interrupt the question earlier <laughs> regarding public recording. Um, but, so, in general, I can tell you that, you know, how it works, how it applies. Um, but over the years, yes, we've had people ask about, you know, who's paying, what are they paying on, how much, who's been audited. We can't do it. Especially now that the meetings are recorded, we cannot discuss details. Uh, what I've shared with Penn is, is public information. Real estate tax records. Our public information, so there's nothing, nothing undisclosed in that sense. So, to the extent that the information is somehow incredibly germane to our findings, if we can't discuss it, well, we. Sorry, what was the question? Yeah, 
what he's saying like if, if we can't discuss it then how do we get the answers kind of if it's if if what we can't discuss it's hypothetical of course but mm -hmm. if there's something we can't discuss yeah, it has bearing on our product or output our blessing or non-blessing or issues things that need to be resolved things that we need to draw attention to i guess we sidebar but I, but I think I think in some cases, if we're trying to understand what's going on with the, the tax revenue and whether it's growing or not growing, we can get data I and mean, it can be sort of um, set up in a way that, that it's either stratified or something. So you can say, here are the big companies, here's the medium-sized companies, here's the small companies, you know, here's here's what the ten-year history has been, number of companies. Like, get some ideas of what's happening so that you're not talking about specific people right. or specific things, but you're, you're still kind of getting an understanding of, all right, what's working, what's not working, where is it falling apart so without getting any names. So it's, it's blinded. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Specifics sense. about the taxpayers, um, those are addressed with the solicitor and the auditor. Okay. Um, we've had many active cases over the years. Uh, there's always active cases that are in process um, some are pretty straightforward, others are very highly complex. Um, so, 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 do the solicitor and the auditor also get a, a contingent fee or are they paid on the retainer? Or what's their situation? The solicitor is paid on a uh, hourly rate. Okay. The auditor has an hourly rate and he does have. Uh, a, con a contract that provides for additional payments, but only when the results of his audits exceed a certain threshold. So, gotta get a hundred thousand. If it's a hundred ten, then he gets part of ten. Yes, but the numbers are higher. Oh, well, I'm just well, yeah. We have we have a pretty high threshold for the auditor. Uh, Is that an annual thing? It's it's a, it's it's measured annually based on the the way it works is it's based on the audits that are opened up in a given year. We then track the receipts from that as they come in over. Some audits can span two three years. So an audit opened in 2018, we may not see money until 2020 2021. Only when those receipts exceed a half million dollar threshold would the auditor then be eligible for uh, an additional incentive compensation. Is that an ongoing number or this, is it a one time deal? Well, it's, it's each year. So there's a new threshold established each year. Each year. So he's going to start over. Then that stuff he got last year doesn't count towards the next year. It's not like the, these guys are getting 20% of everything forever. Uh, true. It's only based on the audits measured okay. for the year, year that they were open. Okay. Yeah. The, so we've talked about audits, we've talked about taxes. Would we review capital projects, for example? Uh, great question. Uh, previous CARFAC members did get involved in, at the direction of the board, certain capital projects from evaluating, you know, the, the project itself, evaluating how to finance the project. Um, there was, there were certain ones that were, they were, the group was asked to look at and uh, did tremendous amount of work and would present results to the board. Uh, at this time, I, I haven't heard anything, I'm not aware of any capital projects that you would be asked to look into. Well, I heard there aren't any. <laughs> sure. What? This, the, in this budget. Just have that from good authority because we applied for one. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think that's a good hypothetical question. But uh, you could, there could be potentially projects, uh, capital projects that we would absolutely provide input on and so forth. Absolutely. So, as a committee, beyond the assignments and things, areas of interest in which you this. There are rules of engagement that we need to follow. That may be on the they may be on the website now, but we have those rules of engagements that we need to follow, regardless of what we're doing. You mean like public disclosure? Yeah, rules? that stuff and other stuff. Like in California, so they have Brown Act, which okay. will tell you what sort of things are um, accessible by the public. So, you know, obviously, reported meetings um, are there. Like what are the guidelines? Are there any things that we should each 
keeping track of things that are not um, recommended for certain kinds of record keeping, that sort of thing? That's a tough question. Uh, my understanding is since the commissioners have uh, voted to have the meetings recorded and fully transparent, um, I, I believe that the rules are going to be that we are careful not to uh, divulge anything that would be confidential, such as the business taxes. Um, I believe we would have to stick primarily to those things that are available to the public, whether it's uh, information that's in the budget or information that's in a forecast or decisions that have been previously rendered by the board. Um, For example, though, if we if we had a subcommittee, mm -hmm. you know, let's say that two of us were asked to look at, you know, some capital project and then two mm -hmm. other people were asked to look at another capital project. Do we need to meet here and have that recorded? Does someone mm -hmm. need to take notes and, and Great point. record them? Great question. We did operate with subgroups similar to what the one remaining subgroup is the audit subgroup that I mentioned earlier. There were other subgroups over the years in the past, and we would have uh, a working group meeting. Um, which, by the way, these meetings. You can set and determine whether you want to do them after work, if, you, if people are available in the morning uh, or during the day. That's, that's entirely up to the committee. So the, these formal meetings can be held at your discretion and your timing. The working group meetings, yes, would be held, and traditionally we've held them uh, during the workday, uh, sometimes early morning, maybe over a lunch, uh, maybe like right at the end of the work day, and those are not recorded, those were not in the public. Uh, that's more of an opportunity to, you know, if there's two or three people and we're working on something particular, and uh, uh, I guess the, the rules are a little bit... But that eventually would end up in a being presented in the committee situation where it would be see the light of day, and it, you know. The results of the work group, the work product, right. uh, yeah. certainly would be, it's all public. Right. What the discussions that went on about it and what was vetted out and someone's opinions um, doesn't have to be on public. Uh, okay, so there's no recording requirement for subgroups? For a work group, no. Because if you could be working on a project then, that you strongly oppose and Joe is strongly in favor of, and uh, you may not want that to be out there in the public because it's, it's more of a, we get into our work groups and we sometimes it becomes somewhat of a think tank. So, so it's gotta be a free flow expression of ideas and uh, that's where some of the nitty gritty work can get done, but ultimately the results and the work product uh, does have to come before the full group in public. So just following up on that point, is there a, 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 a situation or scenario where this group can go off record, meaning not being recorded for a, a reason that, you know, has confidentiality issues associated with it that we want to make sure we are, you know, orienting our discussion the right way once we are recorded? Do you know if this is ever happening? Um, that, that actually, now I, I, I do realize there's, do look, that. there's, With one part. there's no a known history here about the televised meetings or not. I mean, everyone knows about them. Um, but uh, currently we're being recorded, I understand that, and there's a reason for that, to be transparent. But I could imagine for, in order to be effective in certain discussions, th th I, I would imagine they're not, there would be the minority of discussions, but we could be in a situation where we'd want to go in this group, not in a subgroup, but in this group, off record to address a key point. Uh, you know, and we feel that this is relevant to do to discuss in such a manner. Is this an option for this group? I I would say it, it is 
we have the previous group did do that. Um, I believe we have to exercise, not, not the, the chair, whoever, the, sorry, <laughs> I pointed to you, but whoever the chair uh, would have to be monitoring the discussions and using professional judgment could make a decision that there there's elements of confidentiality or, or confidential nature and can elect to go off camera. Um, executive session. Executive session, just like the Board of Commissioners does. Okay. Now, the, the Board of Commissioners does have certain areas that are protected by law where they can go in executive session. Uh, I'm not aware of any specific outline that would govern a group like this. However, we do know uh, taxpayer confidentiality is one. We would go off record. Uh, and just so you're aware, we can discuss some things in more detail, but then there's liability. Because now everyone who hears that information is, is bound by the confidentiality, cannot disclose or discuss, or the township's at risk. So we sign on disclosure. Um, I'll defer to our solicitor if she wants. Uh, I would not be surprised if, as we move on this Act 511 project, that there will be That's documents right. signed, yeah. and um, and then at times as needed, we would go into executive session while we're discussing matters of confidential nature. Well, the commissioners always go in executive session at the beginning, right? Before their meetings, and that, that, that's never re recorded in never. any way, right? No. So that's an opportunity to discuss, you know, whatever issues before surface. True, and then as has to be disclosed that Carfax did go into executive session to discuss matters of confidential nature, and that would, and that is exactly what would be reflected in the minutes that we went into executive session. I have one la last question along those lines to finish my thoughts here. We always get, as I understand it, certain assignments from the commissioners. We would like for you to look into this, or we'd like for you to look into this. Is there a scenario where Carfac does it the other way around and say, we are concerned about certain aspects that, you know, we we are aware of, like, <coughs> and we would, you know, would like to find a way to, to address those with you or otherwise, and so kind of coming from the other side. Um, I find that it has happened in the past, um, but I, I also think that A, if it's a consensus of CARFAC, so that CARFAC can unanimously, or in a majority, elect to reach out to the commissioners and say we feel this is important and as long as you get majority or unanimous vote of the board to direct you to do that absolutely yes I, and I and so I, yes there is an opportunity to do that um, provided that the protocol and the approval you know the communication goes both ways with the consent of this group and the consent of the board um, if that doesn't happen, things can become somewhat bifurcated and, you know, we get tangents. Uh, and that's not something we want to see happen. Well, I imagine this is the exception if this should ever happen. But I, hypothetically, I just wanted to know that that, that could happen if mm -hmm. there was a consensus on this group to address Absolutely. a certain point. I think the better direction that the board provides <coughs> the better functioning and the better that this group can accomplish the objectives. Uh, sometimes CARFAC may want this committee to uh, just evaluate. Uh, it could be evaluate a capital project, but they may not want a recommendation. Other times they may want a recommendation from this group. So I think it's important to make sure that the group understands what is the direction of the board and, and the board, not not one commissioner saying, hey, can, can you look into this for me or, mm -hmm. you know, 
if uh, our previous group was was uh, chaired by gentleman Mark Blair, and uh, I think he did a great job of keeping the group, keeping the formality of the process, so that with there weren't you know tangents and you know people going off in different directions. He kind of kept everyone focused uh, and in in alignment with the board. logistical question I raised earlier um, in terms of these I don't know how often these meetings are held I know in the calendar they every month at least the calendar I saw uh, but what if someone can't physically attend have you do you have people call in on some of them does that count as a quorum or not um, first I think the the committee can can elect to set the meetings how you choose. Uh, we we went with the monthly because that was was the a previous format that we had. Okay. Um, it, it works, but it may not work for everyone. So if the committee decides to meet formally, formally um, or something, but you maybe have a work group meeting in between, that I'll leave that to to the committee. Um, as long as we have a quorum, and my understanding. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. A phone in will count towards the forum. Today it does count. Okay. Yeah. So if you're unable to physically attend, um, in my personal experience, my opinion that the person phoning in it might be challenging because sometimes it's you know you get a lot of conversation going on and you know we've been we've been at it over an hour so. It, it can be it can be trying, um, which is why the, if, if the meeting is we have an agenda, it's structured, we stick to it. Whatever is on the agenda, it can facilitate, you know, better. And maybe we accomplish some of the details in a work group. But again, that's the, that's your call. That's your call how you want to do that. But to your answer, the quorum that will count towards a quorum. Absent a quorum, the committee can. Take no action. Make no votes. No, no recommendations. Fifty percent. Uh, Fifty-one. Well, well, you have seven members, so we need four. 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 Okay. Yeah. And how many times in the course of a twelve-month period, or does this committee vote on something? And how many times do you really need a quorum? Um. To have a meeting, we always need a quorum. We. Yeah, we said the meeting. By if definition if of the word meeting. Lack of a quorum, then there's no there's no minutes, there's no meeting. Okay. If, we, if there's no quorum. A work group is not necessarily a meeting. It depends how many members here are part of that work group. Now this is all formalized someplace? Uh, you mentioned you mentioned the charter for Carfax. I, I saw something on the website. Is there something beyond that that the commissioners ten years ago approved that this is going to be the charter for this organization going forward? Uh, I'm not entirely sure on the work group, but I know. But I just I'm talking about Carfax. Oh, Carfax. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been it's been it was chartered ten years ago. Uh, is that what's on the website? Resolution. There was a re yes, the resolution. Yes, it, it was adopted uh, with the financial audit being its primary right. purpose. Right. Everything that flowed after that was at the direction of the board to look into various areas of the township. And remember, we don't do the financial audit. It's really coordinating it. It's a very big difference. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be involved. You're gonna be educated. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, it's it's o open book. You, the more questions you ask, you're, you're going to. When is the timing of that? When does the fiscal year end and all that stuff? And, and the, what's that timetable look like? Fiscal year ends December 31st. Um, we will do, we've already begun some uh, pre audit planning. Uh, we're setting up our timetables. We are uh, establishing 
the uh, we'll, we'll have a meeting late January, early February, just a pre-audit meeting. Ed will be invited. Uh, we begin. <coughs> we'll put on the calendar when the field work will commence. Uh, prior to field work, there's a lot of work the staff are doing. So our finance office is just will be will be buzzing, you know, for with a lot of activity. The first six months is is the the busiest time of year. Tax bills goes out, stormwater, <coughs> sewer. It's it's all the it's all the revenue activities of the township. Uh, tax returns are coming in for the businesses by May 15th, and the audit's going on. So our time is really crunched. When, when is the uh, when is the when are they usually on site here? The auditors. Uh, typically in March. March. Late March, early April, mid April. Uh, we try to get a draft by the end of April, and we try to have in general general terms. We'll have a calendar which will I'll circulate once we have specific dates, which will lay out the end of field work, the issuance of the draft, uh, the draft presented to this group. Uh, we move from a draft to doing our comprehensive annual financial report. Again, you'll have a chance to review that. Uh, in there, you'll have a meeting with the auditors to discuss the audit, the process. Uh, again, Ed serves as the liaison, so uh, there could be probably one you know, heavy meeting where there's a lot of content, a lot of material covered. Uh, there could be, and then other meetings where Ed may be just providing updates. The goal is to get this done by June or something, or what we want to There's a very key date at the end of June um, that they want to meet, that management wants to meet, and the commissioners now have grown accustomed to it, June 30. So we work backwards from that. Uh, when are the commissioner meetings? So we're really looking. Probably two approved. meetings prior to that is when we would like to get the inf report to the commissioners for their acceptance, um, knowing that <coughs> we still have another date if we need it. Back um, and then we keep working back, we'll go from there, work backwards, and everything ties back. We sit down and go through the calendar carefully on this. How much time does management need? How much time, which includes staff? How much time do the does the accounting firm need? Um, we try to balance everything. That's well, and if there's if there's some issues that we discussed, uh, do you have the, uh, the ability to weigh in on the scope of the audit, or is that strictly the purview of management? The scope of the audit is a combination of if there's something we want the auditors to look at. We can make it very clear to them. We want you to look into this. Part of the concept in my profession as a CPA is we have CPAs, if they're hired to do an audit, in this case, uh, we are not tying their hands what they can or cannot look at. It's open to them. They have to determine where they perceive to be potential risk factors and decide what they want to concentrate on or not. Um, at the same time, we may be aware of something we want them to look at. So we can That'll go be part of like that pre audit meeting and we can go and say, we want you to also look into this. And they decide if they think um, it is relevant if the risk factors merit looking into it or not. Um, it's part of the way an accounting firm operates today. Sounds like a good item for discussion next month. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good item for discussion next month, I guess, right? Typically, the scope is determined based on their assessment of internal control. If management starts over-directing, we want to be careful uh, not to give the auditor an impression that we're, that we're pushing too hard in one direction as to maybe avoid a different area. Uh, we also don't want them to be doing work that is outside the scope of the audit and then incur additional fees. Uh, so to answer to your question, or to your point, Ed, they will determine scope based on evaluation of internal control and, and the risks. 
we can expand it. Um, We're not going to contract it. But I think it has to. Be, <laughs> no, won't, no, we can't. No. With approval, expand. Pardon me. Approval. It's a budget item to expand. And we have to be sensitive to the timing, the extent of work. What does it do to our timeline? And is it relevant to the evaluation of the overall preparation of the financial statements and the opinion? Or is it more of a special project that would have to be done outside of the audit? So those are things, those are great things for discussion. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's all it's all on the table. So this will be the fifth year that the current firm is doing the audit. I'm sure they have a good sense of the school. They have a very good sense. And they have, a, unless something unusual has happened, they have a pretty good idea of what they want to concentrate on. So, and, you know, that's up to them. Do you deal directly with them, Ed? Yes. In concert with management, and then also separately from management. So I don't know if the group is, wants to consider, uh, maybe just think about tonight and maybe at, at, a, at another meeting, consider your appointments to the chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. Uh, we mentioned about the chair's role, but the vice chair is really the backup and the go-to. Uh, that's the right-hand person of the chair, that at least as we've seen it operate before. I mean, you guys are all professionals, you've, I'm sure you've worked with you know, these the organizations and you can d decide and determine the extent of uh, you know a chairman and vice chairman's role I mean but the chairman does set the agenda run the meeting um, and uh, the and the secretary would would record the minutes um, the minutes really are simply recording the date the time who's present who's not present and any significant, any votes taken, everything else is really, you know, discussion. Uh, there's, there's no need for recording. We talked about this, we talked about this, because it's all kind of on the system anyways, right? Exactly. The discussion ensued about the projects for 2019, right. or 2020. So we have access to the uh, media, I assume, but there are action items, there are dates, there are things that we have to get done. There's and those are all things that need to be admits so that we can all where we are. Yeah. Once once you develop what action item once you develop that agenda and you then begin sure. Yeah. I mean it's it will all flow from uh, the direction of the board, what are the priorities to focus on. And the board may come and say, hey, we need to look at these three areas. These meetings, you could focus. You could choose to focus on one at a time. You could focus on all three. Uh, again, it's up to, to this group how you want to conduct your activities. Are we bound by that? Uh, I mean, if they say look at this, we've got to look at it. Because um, you know, I mean, like it's it's sort of like a citizens are the review boards. I think it's it, you know it's not it's like it's not subservient to them to at some level, suggestion. right? Well, <laughs> well, they could. They're yeah. supposed to direct. Correct. what we're going to look at. Okay. Um, we can spend, we've done it where we have spent time, um, a lot of time on particular items. Other items, very little, almost nothing, because we said it just isn't worth the okay. energy. Uh, so so we have some say to be. that. We have, there's, that's part of the give and take. Mm -hmm. right. uh, one thing that might be helpful is if, if we could get a, a sort of a list of all the people with uh, email addresses, you know, cell phone numbers, or, or that kind of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I think that would be really helpful to sort of foster communication. Absolutely. And is it seven? Is that the number of this group? Is it fixed or is it? Can't go to uh, nine. I Carfac was originally constituted with nine members. Nine. Uh, so is there ongoing recruitment for the other two? Or <laughs> no? That's that's at the, that's entirely up to the board how and when. And if they choose to, uh, you know, appoint new members. 
Well, it could have. I mean, if there's a workload, we have so many people to do so much work and how many hours. And True, and I think I think the Rob's point of if, if there's the board's is asking, and again, I, I say board. It's I will uh, I'll ask you guys to be mindful of the consensus of the board. Um, so in prior years, there was a meeting at the beginning of the year. There were board members present. There was discussion about projects. There was a listing of projects put together. That list went back in front of the board in the form of a resolution. Just so everyone was clear that these are the items and priorities that the Board of Commissioners is asking Carfact to look at for this particular year. Uh, I think that's very helpful uh, that, you know, that that process is followed so that you don't find yourself getting off on a tangent and getting direction from maybe one or two members. It's better that it's established as a formality. I think for right now with business taxes, um, that there can be, you know, a significant learning curve and a lot of involvement mm -hmm. and engagement, depending how you want to go and look at this, depending how you want to, how you want to do this. Um, the answer could be it's just it's the economy. You know, we've, you know, things, but that doesn't seem to make sense. That doesn't seem to jive. Exactly. Um, there are other things we can discuss in a work group, get into more details. So I, I think for um, for next month or whatever, I think we should have a, a little review of what you think the pre-audit meeting is going to look like and what that should look like. Um, we can get some information on 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 what the taxes, you know, what the history has been, mm -hmm. you know, like ten years of, of some sort of high-level data and maybe the different pieces and. Uh, something like that, so we can see, you know, what just what is happening, you know, how is it changing, or, or sure. whatnot. Uh, uh, and then I'll I'm also thinking we, I don't know if we're prepared to make a recommendation on who should be in charge at this point in time. I don't know, personally. Yeah, I mean, at some point to formalize it, you'll, you'll have to tackle that. Um, and it could be something we say next next month. We're gonna we're gonna. That's going to be. Sure, and also when I circulate this list, you'll have each other's emails. You can right. you can communicate independent of us, and um, and maybe come to the next meeting ready to have a nomination. Right. And that's and we follow the same process as the board of commissioners. There's a nomination, you know, a second, and, and a vote. Uh, same procedures, I guess, with Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure I circulate this information. I can start to circulate some of the business tax data as well. I'll ask you to, um, when you have a chance, look at our comprehensive annual financial report on the website, CAFR for short. Towards the back is a statistical section. There's about 20 different tables of stats. Um, in there you'll find some very high level numbers on business taxes over the past 10 years okay. um, start. and then I'll start drilling down into other other pieces of information that would help. Time commitments for this group and for the various positions I think that would be important for everybody to sort of know what the history has been. Mm -hmm. what, what are we looking at here? And no one ever actually told me that. It, 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 it could be open-ended. I know it can go forever. But when we first started as Carfact we were not meeting monthly at all. Um, it was more uh, almost quarterly and as the workload became more involved uh, we started having more and more meetings and to just handle it. We did break into subgroups and the subgroups would meet on their particular areas. We could be running three to five subgroups at any one time, plus the audit. That was so, a heavy year. Was um, heavy and it just depends on what the commissioners want us to look at. It depends if we come up with something 
that we think is relevant and we want to look into that and the commissioners say okay we take our direction from them seems to me the next phase here should be really at least from my point of view I'm not very familiar with this is to kind of come up to speed in terms of just the basics the logistics the process the timing of events you know whatever information uh, you can get to us you know that we should know um, and, and, and you know and then kind of digest that before we have a, another meeting because we have another meeting in a month um, it's going to be legit you know, I just probably won't be able to leave our meeting for because uh, you know I haven't really digested probably enough of this uh, at least from my point of view um, um, and uh, so Anyway, I would appreciate just getting information at this point. Uh, you know, scheduling, how do we fit into the commissioner's timetable in terms of key events like the audit so we protect those schedules and then kind of work back into this maybe in terms of our schedule. But anyway, I, I, at least I'm, I'm starting a little bit from scratch here, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, okay. Ed is very familiar with this. And he, you can help us a lot, I'm sure. I had to get us oriented, but uh, personally, I uh, need to catch up a lot. Would this be in the form of links, or do you guys Dropbox, or what, what, what logistics do you have? I mean, this could be a fair amount of information. You'd say, well, it's on the web, but there's other stuff to point out. I think starting out, any any other information we're going to disseminate, we'll, we'll just email out to the group. Uh, well, we could have, you know, like Dropbox or whatever. I mean, you can set up a, you know, easily a, a file for us that we you can deposit things in and then we can access it. It's a very efficient way of doing things. Really is. We do it all the time, right? Yeah. You get a lot of different di different pro good ways how yeah. to do it. You can do it Google, uh, you know. Um, and maybe there may be sort of public issues with that, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah I mean, to some extent, but they're pretty well protected. I mean, uh, I use... No, I'm, no, I'm thinking more like public disclosure kind of issues where I'm just thinking about information at this I point, right? Yeah. That, that I agree. Was, I mean, it's a great tool. You know, yeah, it's a great tool, and, and then we just we just deposit it in there. We access it. I think it's a great suggestion. And uh, you know, we would. This is all non-confidential stuff, more or less, at this point, right? We're just talking about. It's all public. Yeah, and uh, so, but it's all in one place instead of us trying to chase emails or then go to this side or that side. I mean, at least initially that would be a lot of, very, a lot of help to get that focus. And then we can kind of, you know. Yeah, I know I'm going to be putting it on my own Dropbox, so yeah. you might as well make it easier to have one for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I would, I'd do the same thing. i put it immediately. Because I'm not going to access it in different dogs. places yeah. too. I can be at work, I can be at home, I can be wherever. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then whoever sets it up gives permissions to right. the various email accounts to access. Yep. Yeah. So you don't have to have the Google email to access the Google Docs, right? You can just Correct. access it. You, you get a link if you yeah, want. Yeah, you can do it through. I think you, you I can sign on with any. You don't, it doesn't have to be a Google right. gmail.com type email address. It can be anything. Right. Yeah. I think I. So that if you send us a list with all the emails, we'll have that. I participated in one with a Yahoo email once. Okay. I've used Dropbox. I've used Google Docs. I like Dropbox actually. We can. Like we'll, Dropbox work on yeah. we'll work on getting that. We'll work on getting that. I think it's more secure. Yeah. Wait, part. I think Dropbox is. Yeah, we use now. It's pretty secure. Your business, uh, it is pretty secure. If you think Dropbox is okay, then let's use it. It's simple to use too. Yeah. So, what should we look for that? What do you think? should we look for that? I mean, we take it a step further in the firm because if you're a firm client, um, we send codes to you so you can access your information or send us information right. and that by itself is highly secure. I've used it for years for probably seven companies you know and I've never had a problem with it uh, and you can use links too for people who don't aren't on Dropbox right? you know they give you you know access to that so I, I think it's a proven system as far as I can tell and if you know you and your business are comfortable with it you can't do better than that I don't think. <laughs> Too much, too easily. <laughs> Trust 
trust me, we're in my field, we're paranoid. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, they, I deal with if you're a client, we have your life on fire. Yeah, absolutely. I, right now, in our case, it's five levels of security to get into our server. All, all of our lawyers is the same thing. Every, it's, it's, and I, I'm happy with that, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I can trust that. But I just find it, you know, easy to access and easy to use, and we can just name it and make it ours, you know, and and right. That's it. I'll check with Bill, and then we'll talk to our IT guy, and we can work on getting that set up. Um, I would say in, in the interim, just looking at our financial report, and financial report for 12-31-18 is on the website, and the budget yeah. for 2020 has just been posted. Uh, I mean, you're talking hundreds of pages yeah. so uh, you'll get yeah you there's plenty of there to to dive into I can send uh, along with the contact information I'll, I can I'll send out some just little highlights of the business tax try to condense it into one or two emails but and uh, if we have the Dropbox set up in advance I'll just put it in there and then we'll work on it. But uh, if anybody has an interest in any Not interested in being the main guy. Just I don't, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I just I, I'm still working. I'm still doing a bunch of stuff, you know. So I, I just don't feel like I have the bandwidth to do it. I'm happy to help out, but I, I just I don't feel I could do a good job, and I don't want to do it if I'm not gonna do a good job. So I'll be honest. Is that for chair or chair and vice chair? I, you know, I I, I don't want to be the. Sounds like the vice chair. That, that's still <laughs> open for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to get up to speed. <laughs> I don't have the history here, but I don't, you have obviously a lot of history here to be yeah, sure. I don't want to be chair, I've been vice chair, and secretary. We actually, you all normally recorded that and provided us with the, the board chair. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and. Again, remember the secretary, and because they're now recorded, it's date, time, present, not present, and discuss this, voted on that. Bingo. There's no need for. Page, right? There's no need for. Uh, it could be a half a page, right. literally. Um, in years past, when we had multiple projects, maybe we had, you know, two or three bullet points saying discussion on this. You know, update from Ed regarding the audit, field work essentially complete, you know, update from so-and-so on capital projects, you know, and, but uh, very concise, very, you know, that's, that's the goal of the minutes is that it reflects. Is it reasonable from a frequency point of view to start with quarterly meetings as a beginning and then adjust it to, s to see how we see the needs? Because we don't s know how many projects we're going to really work on yet, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there as a consideration. Okay. We have a big crunch. I mean, the, there's a bunch of stuff that happens in February, March, right? Yeah, I don't right. know. I mean, that, that's obviously an issue. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the logistics are. I'd recommend keeping the February. Uh, again, this is yeah. your group. We're, we're just here to Ones or something help like facilitate, that. but in order, in terms of organization and process, I think the sooner that you you guys can agree on the chair, vice chair, and secretary, at least those parameters are set, and then that that's that's really number one priority. Uh, the timing of the meetings and what can be done in a work group versus this meeting, your call. Um, with one uh, with one directive from the board at this time, I, you know, it, and with an experienced member on the audit subgroup, uh, yeah, there will be some time getting up to speed. But it's I don't. It's going to take time. It'll take some time, but the burden at this point I don't see it as you know heavy. Uh, it's the learning curve and getting uh, the time in and. Uh, 
So <coughs> somehow the township got by without this place meeting for two years. <laughs> two years. <laughs> I mean, except for except for Ed's okay. efforts. Uh, and and, and by the way, that was so the reason that <coughs> I continued with that. Understood. Because I felt Understood. Yeah. an ethical yeah. uh, concern is that it still was needed, and I wanted to make sure that would happen for us as residents and for all the other stakeholders. And there are three or four different broad groups of stakeholders. And we were able to accomplish it. And major part was because of uh, Tate, White, and Zinkowski. We have a lot of seasoned staff. We have a lot of people who have been here for quite some time, especially in our finance department. Um, it's a team effort. So these are resources. We're not. These are resources. These people. Tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah. We, we we really Bob, you, you or Bill will be here for every meeting? I mean, some representative from the township will be here. Uh, unless there's some really extenuating circumstance, Bill or I, or both, okay. uh, attend the meetings. And, and go back to the tax thing. Uh, I'm sure you've talked to your, your friends in Tredifferin, East Town, and whatnot. Is this kind of a, a regional problem with business taxes, or are we a special case? Um, I wouldn't. I think it's too early to, to see it as regional. <coughs> We've done our own homework on it, and um, I think probably in a, in a subsequent meeting, there there's a lot of details and a lot of things we're looking into that uh, where I think we will find some answers, and they're already in process. Uh, just as a as as a point of reference. In our comprehensive annual financial report, we publish every every year. There are ten businesses. They're not named, but their industry is named. Those ten typically comprise thirty to thirty-five percent of our total business revenue. So they're a third of a third. Yeah. Of the total time. And you can pretty out of, much out of two thousand plus list, businesses. You can figure out who they are. So, so it's not difficult. So when you have a little, you know, when we're looking at the, the metrics and we're looking at numbers, um, we don't have to drill down too far before we start finding trends. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, so, okay, but so you see, I got you. I we, we have things in process that I, I think will be fruitful to discuss uh, in a work group session that with the auditor. Is the, there's an employee tax as well, right? Isn't no. Well, the... Yes, it's a local services tax. Like the LST, a year which is well, it's fifty-two dollars a year. Fifty-two dollars a year. Okay. Yeah. And That's is that is that part of the business tax, or is that a separate tax? Uh, it falls under the. It's in that other bucket. It's it's a different line item, a different bucket. It's not measured in with our business taxes as a whole. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that might that be an interesting correlation, right? Because you can see, you know, how many people are working. You know, is that number? But remember, that's for somebody who's physically working here. So right. my main office for the firm, we're in Wayne, we're in the same building as the mainline chamber. And um, anybody who works out of that office is paying the LSD. Right. Yeah, great point. That's a, that's a great, uh, that's, that's one metric that we can, we can put on the list of, let's see if there's a correlation. And we have all the data. It's like the mercantile ones, those will be pretty related to, th those should, there should be a tie to those, those should tie to folks. People working, people storefront, because the businesses could be outside of, they can do a lot of stuff outside of the bracket, but it doesn't, but they're getting taxed on, right, gross receipts. If they're headquartered here, they're taxed on 100%. Right. If they're headquartered only in Radnor and there are no other locations, 100% of the receipts are taxed, regardless of where you conduct business. Right, where your headquarters is. Right. Yeah. When you get into multiple locations, you get into apportionment and attribution um, and then allocations if mm -hmm. necessary. So it's um, when we get started, when we start getting into the thick of it, uh, I'd be happy to bring the auditor in and uh, share with you, you know, some of the, you know, some what's more involved in, in this process. That might be a good starting point, though. Somebody who's worked on this knows all the ins and outs and uh, 
give us an overview of the process. What do you look for? Mm -hmm. do we do? This person has worked on it for a while, right? It's been 20 years, so three years. So. He turns 70 next year, and I'm really concerned. <laughs> 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 he wants to retire someday. <laughs> and he's not, I'm not ready to let him go. <laughs> so, uh, so you want to defer till the next meeting for a vote then? Sounds for it. Okay. And I guess once I circulate the list, you can then communicate amongst, you know, whether you want to keep the February. Was it January meeting? No, January. I'm oh, sorry, January. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm in January. <laughs> 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 I'm jumping ahead. When's the next date? It will be January. I think it's the 15th. 15th. You know, I have that other meeting with you on the 14th. Yes, and we have a board meeting on the 13th. Right. So the 15th might be tough for me. Um, do, we go, keep do, go. do we have to do my thing? So Your call. Yeah. I, I just yeah. think it would be probably imperative that we do or not get one going. Like at, at some point, if it, it becomes to a point where we, once we're organizing, we know what we're doing, we can maybe, you know, back off a little. Right. I think you're right. I mean, we need, I think we need to get a little positive momentum going. Right. And we do this quarterly, we're going to come back in 90 days and kind of look at each other again. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I, I think keep in mind the work groups can be helpful in between. If there's, as long as there's, there's activity going on, uh, and this meeting doesn't occur, if you miss a month but we have a work group meeting to focus on the priority, that'll help. So. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> so moved. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Should have done that already. <laughs> <laughs>